In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Father Paul, and this is the Good News. The scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through to 10. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complaining, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one who is lost until he finds it? And when he is, has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who needs no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I dare say all of us at one time or other has lost something or other. Could be as simple as the car keys. Well, quite often it does happen when you're parking in a, a supermarket, you forget where you parked, you forgot where you parked the car, and you're looking high and low for it until you find it. Then, ah, oh, the relief that comes upon you. Even though these days they have a special button on your key that will make the car make a noise. But that's not the point. The point is. When Jesus was talking to the tax collectors and talking to the Pharisees more so in particular because the Pharisees were upset tax collectors were sort of known as thieves in those days someone you couldn't trust really they were sinners I guess you could say and Jesus said that, told those parables, there's two of them, one about the, the lost sheep and the other one about the lost coin. Talking about the woman and talking about the man with the sheep. What would happen? As, as Jesus said, I say to you likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 just persons who do no, do no repentance. And also after the coin, likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You may have heard, and I've even said it a couple of times, the church is not meant for saints as such. We strive to become saints by following the teachers of Jesus. It's not easy. It is not easy. Saints are sinners 
that have been forgiven. That's right. We are all sinners. And those who manage to become saints, and this only happens when we finally get to heaven, we become saints. Saints are those who are forgiven. Heaven rejoices just over one sinner who repents. This is why it's so important for us to remember this. We must repent continually for what we have done or what we have not done, for our shortcomings. And I'm sure you, th if you think about it, you have many. A lot of people have difficulty going to confession because they think they are doing the right thing. And this is why it's always important. Preparation. Not only just for receiving the Eucharist at the liturgy, but preparation for confession. I know it's not always easy to remember all of our vast numbers of sins. We commit these sins and then we forget about them. We let it go. So when it comes to that time in confession, to ask God for forgiveness. Sometimes I think we need to throw like a blanket over it. Because we can't, or being human, always remember every single individual. We pray for forgiveness. For those sins that we can remember and those that we can't. That's the important thing. Forgiveness. Some people get a bit nervy when they go to confession because there may be a bad experience they've had with a particular priest. The priest is there not to judge us. He is there to help us. And if he doesn't, there is a problem then for that priest. God forgives us. And if there is a reason why the priest has problems, he then has to answer to God. Don't be afraid to go to confession to repent. God is the one that forgives you. We mere mortals, humans, sinners, have been given that awesome responsibility to pray over the person repenting. Jesus forgives us, not the priest. And as it says here, about the lost sheep and the lost coin, that there will be more joy in heaven over that one individual who repents and comes back to God. The angels rejoice over the repentant sinner. Sounds hard, but it isn't. We must repent. When we sin, we turn our backs to God. 
we walk away from the right path. We ask God to forgive us. We turn back around and head towards God, praying constantly to forgive us for all our shortcomings. And we do have a lot, every one of us. It's only the saints who eventually get to heaven for their reward. You'll find all the saints that have ever lived have all had their time. Some spend pretty well all their lives in repentance, preparing themselves to meet God, to meet Jesus on that judgment seat, asking for God for mercy continually. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.